Hey guys, welcome to Shower with KST. I'm your girl Kay, and today we're going to be doing a full show where we discuss a series of celebrities and the controversies that they have going on in their life, and I just share my thoughts and commentary on them, alright? So, first up, <laughs> we have Kevin Gates, and he said something the other day that really had me like, what the fuck did you just say? I'll play it for you guys. Hey, but do me two favors. Find me two niggas. Find me that nigga that can say I told on him. And find me that nigga that can say he stuck his dick in me. He said, do me one favor. Find me a guy that could say that I snitched on him. One. Or find me the guy that can say that he stuck his you know what inside of me now kevin gates i don't know what's going on i feel like kevin gates doesn't like the transgender rumors that are circulating because a transgender recently came out saying that kevin gates took her out on a date and kevin gates isn't really liking it and i feel like that's his way of responding subtly responding without actually responding but i'm like why not just respond to the rumors and not go this route because this route you look crazy but that's what i have to say about kevin gates good luck to this man um on to Miss Nene Leaks. Miss Nene Leaks said, warning to all ladies, narcissist men are the worst people on planet Earth. They come to destroy. She continues by saying, narcissist men will slander your name to anyone that will listen, be aware they are they are never telling the truth so i don't know what nini leaks is going through ever since her husband craig has passed greg sorry has passed um i don't know her choice in men has been really sloppy and i feel like she needs to kind of get it together and um before she lose it you know like before she lose everything like her reputation and stuff like that i feel like she needs to find someone settle down with someone and just have that person be her all too but i guess if you can't really comb through and find the right person it's hard for you to settle down it seems as if she is trying to settle down but her choices thus far that i've seen in the media circulate and i feel like they've all been ugh, like me like why is this your taste in men so i feel like if you're attracting narcissistic men you have to like kind of check and see what you're doing to attract them and you also have to acknowledge that okay well i'm art attracting men who are self-centered and selfish so since i'm attracting men who are self-centered and selfish that's going to be one of the things that i vet the men that i'm dating for you know on so i just feel like nini has to take a quick inventory and see why she's attracting narcissistic men now i want to move on to Nicki minaj's husband kenneth petty right and i was kind of i was a bit iffy about talking about this story but i said hey why not so kenneth petty according to neighborhood talk kenneth petty refuses to settle uh, settle the assault lawsuit still maintaining his innocence despite the conviction the neighborhood talks reports neighbors it looks like kenneth petty is refusing to settle a sexual assault lawsuit despite a judge's order petty previously had a lawsuit filed on him by jennifer huff who accused petty back in 1995 when she was 16 years old and he was 15. due to due to petty's lack of cooperation huff is requesting the court set a scheduling order her suit claims that since speaking out about the assault petty has caused her emotional distress and has allegedly been trying to bribe her to reset recant her story petty initially served four out of five year sentence after pleading guilty to the attempted rape however he says he only took the plea deal after being told he would end up having to serve 20 years in prison petty still argues that the encounter 
was consensual and that he committed no improper conduct. So basically, Nicki Minaj and husband Kenneth Pendy is saying, all in all, I didn't do that to her. I didn't hurt her in any way, shape, or form. So because I didn't hurt her, I don't want to settle anything. I don't want to conform like I did before and just take a plea deal or just cop out to something because it's the easier route. I feel like Mr. Petty is choosing to fight for what? he his innocence right and i feel like he deserves to fight for his innocence and he deserves to stand up for himself and say hey i really didn't do that and not have to be that scared little boy anymore who just cops out to something because it's the easier thing to do and i think miss huff is gonna have a hard challenge in time you know proving her case being that she has been all over the internet doing a lot of internet stuff that can definitely come into question her character on the witness stand so i mean we'll see what happens with this case as this case develops but i do love the fact that mr petty continues to maintain his innocence and refuses to settle and refuses to back down from everyone and everything let's move on there are reports that according to the jasmine brand kim and croy call the cops on each other as they struggle to live under the same roof amid divorce authorities tell ex-couple to remain civil in front of the minor children now also um the radar online had reported that they were having a rough time living together with the radar online says kim zolciak and a strange husband croy totally hate each other as they live under the same roof during that um bitter divorce so for this kim and croy situation i just feel like at the end of the day like they have to get it together or lose it forever like you have to recognize that yes you're going through a divorce and yes it's not the prettiest thing in the world to go through but you're going through it publicly in the same way in which you guys were able to uphold this picture perfect life to us all this time before it's the same way you need to uphold it to us now don't let us in on all this nasty little stuff that you guys have going on the fights calling the cops and all of that like why go through all of that why especially with your children and stuff like that i just feel like you know it sucks to see that they're going through this and it's like every other day another report comes out that you know if it's not um accusing if it's not kim accusing croy of doing drugs it's croy accusing her of being having gambling issues if it's not that then it's them calling the cops on each other if it's not them calling the cops on each other it's reports that they hate each other like there's always something new coming out about this couple and i just feel like come on keep your stuff private keep your business to yourself keep it private like whatever is going on however you feel get a counselor get a divorce counselor and try to work through the shit that you have going on in your marriage because guess what at the end of the day when you guys become totally divorced we can't help you as the as the fans we can't help you you know what i mean we can't help you with your financial issues we can't help you guys with the emotional issues and the emotional baggage that you guys are going through so seek the help that you can seek and stop bringing it to the internet but essentially that's just how i felt about this whole um kim and croy situation now let's move on to lizzo and candace owens before we jump into what lizzo had to say because lizzo was having a bit of a breakdown feeling as though the fans were coming at her and attacking her for her weight some a prime suspect that always attacks lizzo for her weight is candace owens and i guess lizzo got tired of the shit because she ended up blocking candace owens and this is what candace owens had to say I guess Lizzo wasn't lying when she said truth hurts. But yeah, clinical obesity is still the number one killer in America. So let's stop glorifying it. I think Candace always needs to lay up off of Lizzo because she has been attacking Lizzo and has been going in on Lizzo for months now. And I feel like if you keep poking the bear, don't get mad when the bear comes back to get you. Like you have to leave people, let them be, leave people, let them live their own lives. You have to learn to mind your business. Yes, her yes, her weight is perhaps clinical obesity, but do you think do you think Lizzo doesn't already know that? She already knows that and she's gonna choose to live her wet life the way how she wants to live her life. And if that's not the way in which you want to live your life, then you mind your business. You mind your business. 
And Lizzo also had to say a couple of things to the fans. Um, she says, y'all don't know how close I am to giving up on everyone and quitting and enjoying my money and my man on a fucking farm. The love definitely does not outweigh the hate on social media all because I'm fat. This is crazy. I hate it here. Lizzo continues to say, I just logged on the app and this is the type of shit I see about me on a daily basis. It's really starting to make me hate the world. Then someone in the comments said, I eat lots of fast food. I literally stopped eating fast food years ago. Also, to the people who haven't had an original thought or fresh air in years, being fat isn't my brand. Being fat is what my body looks like. That's it, that's all. My brand is feel good music. My brand is championing all people. My brand is black girl liberation. I, she continues to say, I've always led with my talent, but when I dropped good as hell, feel good music, that was that music was corny. When I dropped juice disco pop, that wasn't for them. When I was body positive in 2016, being body, body positive was pandering. Not everybody on that wave and I'm still shit on? Man, fuck y'all. Y'all really need to touch grass. I'm not trying to be fat. I'm not trying to be smaller. I'm literally, literally trying to live and be healthy. This is what my body looks like even when I eat super clean and I'm working out. Y'all speak on shit y'all know nothing about and I'm starting to get heated. Lizzo continues by saying, I will never shut up about how difficult y'all make it for me, for fat people to simply exist. Minding your business is free. If the internet was limited and one comment took 24 hours to post, I wonder what social media would be like. So Lizzo went in a little bit and I feel like she went in because she's frustrated and I feel like anybody in her shoes would be frustrated if constantly you're going on the internet and all you're seeing is comments about what you look like, how fat you are, what's going on with you, old performances, videos of old performances, fat shaming you. I feel like if anyone was in her shoes, whether it's being fat shamed, called ugly, talking about your surgery constantly, whatever, whatever aspect of your body it is, but to be shamed for that, I feel like anybody would be tired of it and I feel like she was exhausted she was tired and she decided to go in do I agree with Lizzo yes people need to mind their business I feel like she knows what she's going through she knows the health issues that she faced she knows what she should do and what she shouldn't do so why does reiterating it to her every two seconds what does it do for us or what does it do for her if she already has the information that she needs you know what I mean so for me I have nothing bad to say about Lizzo Lizzo's gonna continue to do Lizzo and I'm gonna continue you to mind my business now let's move on to cardi b and star brim according to radar online cardi b's friend alleged godmother of street gang pleads with the judge for permission to travel for paid club gigs while out on bond so we haven't been hearing much about star brim lately i feel like i, I wanted to actually cover this story because i haven't seen the two of them together in a very very long time i don't know if they're like friends behind the scenes but they choose not to publicize their friendship or if they're no longer friends or if you know like life gets the best of you where you know we're friends when we link we have a good time but um, outside of the link I have my own life you have your own life I don't know what kind of relationship they do have but Star Brim is out here fighting for her freedom fighting for her right to travel so that she can make her money and Minarangar if you have to do what you have to do to make your money to go and travel and do all these different things then do what you have to do shout out to Star Brim good luck to her on getting that motion or whatever it is that she filed granted and yeah i would love to see more of cardi b and star brim together because i feel like back in the days when it was cardi b and star brim everybody was like oh my god look at her bestie her black bestie so you know we'll see what happens but anyway moving on according to the neighborhood talks it says oop moneybag yo admits he cheated on ari says side chick came to ari 
as a woman and he had to fight for her back she didn't take that well but let's listen to what Moneybag Yo had to say all right, been together. Like four years. So you're doing okay in love. You got four years in. You made it through some tough times. Difficult times too, no? Mm -hmm. Difficult times happen. Has it been hot? Because you know, you talk <laughs> about coming from the daddy you came from. I had never been in no real relationship before. That's why I was asking, because that's a me? big transition that's for somebody. That's a big like, transition. So, yeah. of course, you know, I, you know. You made some mistakes. I made some mistakes. You already know what I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm getting there with that. How does she handle that? You know, she ain't take that well. She ain't take that well, but, uh, it got, and then it, and it got crazy, too. It get crazier. Like, it's different, like, when you do something, and then it's like, when you have the person, like, call them and oh. try to tell them everything, like, and so it, that made it even worse on her, like, but I kept it G, though. I just kept it G, like, yeah, you know, you know, I did that. You know, I'm sorry, baby, you know what I'm saying? I just, I made mistakes, you know what I'm saying, that was then. Are you sorry? Because people, guys say I'm sorry. They be sorry. No, I really, I really they be sorry from, they got caught. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. I really come from a pure place. You know what I'm saying? I come from a pure place when I say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I apologize and I just want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to work through it and get through it. And she with it. And she helping me with my, you know what I'm saying? Helping me work through it. That's why I rock with her so tough because it's like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand you. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, don't let it happen again. Don't let this, you feel me? Like, this ain't gonna be our life. This right? ain't gonna be our life. Don't, yeah. don't take me through there, but I do understand. So, I, I like that clip from the interview with Angie Martinez. Now, I have a couple questions that I was trying to like ask while I was listening, while we were listening to the clip. And a question that I had was, why haven't you ever been in a long term, in a long term relationship, money bag? You're like, what's going on? And I know for a fact Ari Fletcher was popping her shit when she found out that you were cheating and I do feel like Money Bag Yo is being genuine in this clip where he's saying look I have turned you know turned things around I'm not being the same person that I used to be and also I am loving upon her and you know being more respectful to her I do believe him that he is being genuine I feel like his mannerisms and his body language and stuff like that is saying that he is being a genuine person and he's not just saying things saying I'm sorry just to pacify her but saying I'm sorry because he really is sorry now a lot of people were upset who watched the actual interview i haven't gotten a chance to watch the actual interview with him and angie martinez because they said that the interview goes into way much more other things than just the cheating rumors but that's what got posted on the blogs so for me i'll try my best to watch the interview and if i do watch the interview i'll definitely share more about the interview on here but for the most part that's what we saw the, the clips from the cheating situation and i feel like being that he is in a public relationship and that he and ari flesher are in the public eye we want to know about them so you know they just post what they know the fans want to know about all right so let's get into music real quick we are loving the music recently so um first and foremost shout out to gunna and his new music shout out to diddy and the city girls on act bad shout out to cardi b i'm trying to remember all of them on um what is the song called i'm put it on the floor remix and Lotto, shout out to the queen, Nicki Minaj on Pound Town 2 Remix, okay? Um, I've been loving the Pound Town 2 Remix, but let's jump into some controversy that we have going on with the songs, all right? And I'm gonna share my opinion on these different songs. So the controversy going on with Act Bad is that a Queens rapper says that Diddy stole it. Diddy and the City Girls and everybody, somebody stole her song. And I want to play this clip, but I swear I hope I don't get no copyright strike for this clip. But I want to play it so that you guys can listen and tell me if you think that Diddy really stole the song. So let me play it for you guys. Hello, this is Ag Bad Services. Are you acting bad or what? Act bad, 
right, right. Y'all ain't gonna get me hit with no copyright strikes. We are not about to play this entire if you look good at bad. But um, personally, let me give my opinion on the song act bad with diddy and the city girls i feel like the song was it, it was good for what it was i feel like um it's a summer song you know it's gonna be in the club it's gonna be on the radio people are gonna play it people are gonna listen to it diddy's gonna definitely push his song he if it's one thing he's gonna do is he's gonna push the push a freaking product okay diddy is the epitome of hustler but not in the streets in a corporate way you see like how hustlers will hustle and sell drugs and stuff like that diddy sells his liquor diddy sells his music and he pushes his content so i feel like this is something that's going to be pushed very well one thing i didn't like about the song was that i felt like jt was stifled now anybody who listens to the city girls knows that jt is the lyrical giant of the group like um young miami isn't that lyrical and i feel like it, knowing that, I feel like because it was a Diddy song, I felt like JT got stifled and over, and Miami kind of got overshined a little, like was overshined a little bit. But to each his own. If JT is fine with it, not all the time. Like not in, at the end of the day, too, not all the time you're gonna sh shine. Sometimes you gotta allow other people to shine too. So I just felt like JT was stifled. But I guess she's okay with having her girl shine a little bit, and you know dominating on a track so however it is that's how it is but the other but back to the controversy that we're discussing at hand this queen's rapper says um swinderella says that her song act bad came out november 6th in 2020 so we're like okay who stole the song who stole the song now it says attention the industry will really send people to bite your whole entire swag you never know who's watching you they not creative enough they're not organic enough so at swinderella back up did act bad did act bad two years ago she was just in she was just in we go up with Nicki minaj and fabio listen i don't know who did their homework but damn even stole the intro aesthetic and the funny part is we need something fire for the video and i came up with that intro in five seconds this is why i tell people doing music keep working the industry will be nothing without the underdogs swindy you're next the mainstream steal from the underdogs they already stole let's get into some things child what's next so this person is basically saying that you know they stole the song from this young lady swindle swinderella and i feel like there are definitely some similarities so i don't know who stole it but that ain't none of my business um yeah i just feel like there are similarities and i feel like if i was this young lady i'd be pursuing some copyright infringement stuff just so that i can get my just due for my original content that i would that i produce you know because there's no reason why we should be stealing from underdogs but that's what we have for act bad now let's listen to a snippet from put it on the floor okay and i hope i don't get no copyright strikes but let's go all right i'm not gonna play a lot but that was cardi b's part so basically lotto put out put it on the floor and cardi b did um basically did um put it on the floor again which is a remix to it now am i feeling it i don't know i feel like at the end of the day cardi like i love you but it's not your best work it's not your best work i felt like put it on the floor is supposed to be a diss track to Nicki minaj right that's what lotto originally made it out to be so if you were going to get on the track and pop your shit then get on the track and pop your shit i feel like you got on the track and you kept it cute but i felt like you didn't bring your all to the track i feel like she could have done better um especially coming up off of tomorrow too like tomorrow too was a fucking hit um, her verse was definitely verse of the year, so it's like, why would you not bring the same heat 
to this you know what I mean and everybody can't be good every single time they do something so I would just say next time around Cardi B bring the heat bring the smoke bring the lyrics bring the punchlines bring everything we want everything I did love the aesthetic I love the outfit I love the twerking I love everything else about the video the visuals were nice the visuals I can't complain about I just wish Cardi B would have stepped it up and would have brought more to the track because she has set such a high expectations for herself with all the work that she has put out thus far but also in tomorrow too being one of her most recent hits so i feel like damn like girl come on bring bring the same heat so that's how i felt about um i was about to say pound town too not pound town too that's how i felt about um put it on the floor too now let me play a little snippet from pound town too because i'm sorry like nikki is that girl and i just hope to god there is no copyright i swear but let's listen to nikki minaj's verse a little bit hey yo my name is pink i made him go get that ink let him eat that pretty pussy now he keep trying to link I i'm pimpin pinky ring his ex is his winky dink i'm about to pop a thingy that's up on this drinking drink it's a trick to this entire thing so bad but let's review pound town 2 pound town 2 Nicki minaj slid on the beat she said it took her three hours to write that and i'm like all it took you was three hours and you did that i do wish that Nicki would have done a visual i feel like Nicki has to get into the habit and i feel like that's where um other girlies excel where they come out with visuals even if it's just um I remember Megan Thee Stallion when she was in the height of her career even if she was doing like a little weekend freestyle or something she came out with the visual it's something that I personally had to learn people like visuals they like seeing it I remember um, not doing much visuals for this channel and then I'm like look people like visuals they like to see stuff so I'm like all right I gotta invest in a camera and invest in all these different things so people can see what what something to go along with the audio and I feel like Nikki I should have should have jumped on a nice little visual with sexy red and 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 then um give it to us because i felt like the numbers would have been better and i feel like nikki nikki has to get into the habit of pushing her songs the same way that you know like a diddy would push his songs and don't get me wrong nikki is pushing her songs because it went number one and number two on itunes i'm just saying in terms of seeing that the audience that we're stepping into nowadays they live for a visual so i just wish she would have done a visual that's the only critique i have about Nicki minaj pound sound too that i ain't get to see some twerking i ain't get to see Nicki minaj give serve some looks and stuff like that because i love seeing Nicki serve her looks i love seeing her be unique and dynamic in all of her different ways shapes and forms so i just wish Nicki would have done that but anyway the the verse on its own is tough so that's all like that's all i have to say three hours for that verse i feel like nikki is just doing her thing now let's go into real quick shensia and her new song sold out <laughs> so that's Chessie's new song um, again I'm not playing a lot of it I I actually like the song when I first went to the song I was like what the fuck is this and I'm Jamaican so I was expecting like a a, a spectacular um, a big intro in the, into the song and she didn't give you a big intro but then I, it's like it was like a thing that led up to the climax like 
it started out slow but then it picked up and I'm like this is a jam and the message behind it was definitely having friends and company around you that sell you out that talk your business and do all these different things so I love the message that she sent I love the fact that she's back in her Jamaican roots because I feel like it speaks to the fact that you don't have to be Americanized to have good music you can definitely stick to your roots look at burner boy who's doing it last last was a song that was in his native language and I don't understand a word that he's saying and it was a huge hit I feel like it's okay to do things in your own native tongue to do things and sing music and do things in your own native blood and still be a mainstream artist and still be a popping ass artist and not feel like you have to convert or change yourself or mold yourself into an American rapper in order to be mainstream not saying that she can't do both but I just enjoyed the fact that she was able to step back into her roots so I really did enjoy that song so check it out it's sold out now the song of the freaking day week month year gonna okay gonna did his thing mind you I am not really a big gonna fan but some of his shit be hot some of his music be lit and you have to like blast it in the car when it comes on in the radio or when you know you're in the mood to listen to some gunna stuff you know you just put it on and you listen to it but gunna hasn't been like i don't know like he hasn't been like my main or favorite artist but the rumors have been circulating right oh he's a snitch he's a snitch he's a snitch and he decided to address those rumors in his new song so let's listen to a little bit of his song the kid will cut out put it on my dad brother yeah he talks so much i showed him i'm a real hunter won't say it but he knows they got real cutters yeah yeah i'm right back in our last man comes all right <laughs> I love the song Bread and Butter. I love the visuals. I love the message. I love that he slowed it down. He didn't get into the booth and was like, <laughs> he got in and he has his, and it's another thing that I'm talking about, sticking to who you are and remaining, re remaining authentic in who you are. He has that real Southern slur and it's like, he still doesn't let it bother him. He still, he say my brother, He's, he, he talks like so southern and it's like I like it I love what he did and a lot of people were saying this brings us into the controversy real quick a lot, a lot of people were saying that oh well you know what um he dissed the little baby so DJ Academics commented and saying I just want to know why gonna talking about little baby like this and Gunner replied and said, that's Cap. I'm just letting the world hear my story. So I like the fact that Gunner is addressing everything head on. A lot of times we're scared, we avoid confrontation, we don't wanna face the lion in front of our face because we're scared we're gonna be defeated. So I like the fact that Gunner has done it in such a creative way. He has done it in a way where People are talking shit and he's not gonna be like he's not gonna act like he doesn't he's um he doesn't know that people are talking shit. He's like, I know you guys are talking shit. Let me call you out on your bullshit and do it in a creative way and do it in such a way that the fans are still gonna love me and everything like that. I love what Gunna did. And there was a couple some couple other songs that came out like Coyle Ray and NBA Young Boy and stuff like that. Those songs I'm gonna review on the shorts because it's just too many songs and I I'm not trying to get hit for no copyright strikes, but Coyle Ray's song, um, Self Love, I heard that was the banger. So shout out to her for that. I need to go and listen to it. I haven't quite listened to it yet. But anyway, let's move on to some congratulations because congratulations are in order for Naomi Osaka. Congratulations on her, she's having a girl baby. Now for me, I'm have, I have mixed feelings about this because I feel like at the end of the day, like, I feel like she's young and I feel like she's a tennis player and I feel like girls don't have no baby and then like let that mess up your dreams, goals and ambitions of doing what you want to do. But hey, you are in 2023 and people live lives that a child, having a child don't necessarily mean you're going to be held back, right? So um, I just feel like at the end of the day, 
um, congrats to Naomi Osaka and good luck to her on her child. Now, Chris Brown also, speaking of new music, Chris Brown also came out with the song as well. Let me see if I could tell you what the name of that song is. I wasn't able to check it out yet, but let me see if I can get the name of the song. It's Don't Give It Away. So, um... I'm gonna check it out and I'm gonna give you guys the review again on my shorts. So check out, let's keep tuned and check out for that coming. It's gonna be a review on NBA Young Boy's song, Coyle Ray's song, and Chris Brown's new song, all right? But what I wanna jump into is Miss Nicki Minaj. So for everybody who knows, Pound, I'm um, not Pound Sound, I'm on my same Pound Sound. It's because Pound Sound 2 is lit but i meant put it on the floor everybody knows that put it on the floor is supposed to be a quote-unquote diss track for Nicki minaj so um flow queen miss erica banks at miss Nicki minaj and said hey nikki um what you doing right now so i guess she's trying to like see what's up with Nicki Minaj, check the temperature of Nicki Minaj, see if Nicki, Nicki Minaj would respond to her and see if Nicki Minaj, would, Nicki Minaj would work with her and stuff like that. Now some people were like mad that Erica Banks did this, feeling as though Erica Banks shouldn't be hitting up Nicki Minaj, like leave her alone, you're not gonna get the feature and stuff like that. But I feel like at the end of the day, like she's in the music industry, she wanna hit up Nicki Minaj and say, hey yo, what's up, how are you, or whatever the case may be. I think she should be allowed to do that. So I I won't I don't have any negative commentary on that now what we are going to jump into is the messy stuff again off of the music off of the back and forth and the controversy going on with the music let's get into Blueface and Krishan the couple we love to hate so Krishan was recently um spotted on a video call with a young man about to link him so let's listen to what the video call was what you doing what you gonna be on man we were down here finna have a little gang night or something I said, we down there finna have a little game night or something. They was over here just chilling. Oh, so you a jack Mm-hmm. Oh, my buddy, you wanna be both? That's his game. Come on. Oh, you bet. All right. I'll stand up. Send the location to this phone. All right. I didn't know she said love you at the end of that, but what Blueface had to say is that's why she get treated the way she get treated. <sighs> Blueface, Blueface, Blueface. I don't know what it is about Blueface, but he is somebody that I really, how can I put this nicely? He is someone that I really, I'm really annoyed by his character. I'm really annoyed when he speaks. I'm really annoyed by the things that he do. Like, I just be feeling like, at the end of the day, like, you are the one that's out here disrespecting Krishan, left, right, and center. And every time you disrespect her, she's on the internet, uh -huh, boo fucking who, crying and apologizing to you. And I feel like that's not essentially what a relationship is about. And you love when she does that. You love it because you feed into it and you feed into the bullshit. So if she is linking somebody else, then that's her prerogative. That's her business. Now, do I personally think she should be linking somebody else? No. Is it because I feel like, oh, she should be treated a particular way and stuff like that? No. I feel like she's pregnant and I think she needs to focus more on her baby and focus more on motherhood and not like chasing after this lifestyle of the fast life the fast life the fast life you gave up part of that chasing the fast life when you decided to pray to god to get pregnant so i feel like krishan has to recognize that okay now that you're pregnant you do need to slow it down a little bit so going out to hang out with friends every two seconds may not be in the cards for you but she hasn't quite grasped onto that yet so Blueface got upset another thing that Blueface done that pissed people off was he did this <laughs> 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 
up, bro. No more time. I'm in and out this life. I'm an Oscar Brown. So the f you're respectful. I'm so disrespectful. He said under this video, he says, I'm in and out a B life. I'm not Oscar proud. So Erica Badu even commented and said, he's trash, universe, do your thing. His mother answered to Erica Badu, but honestly, I don't wanna give his mother much light. I remember um, WAC 100 saying once that Blueface's mother, she doesn't recognize that she is the mother of a celebrity. She wants to be a celebrity mother. And I just feel like she's always involved in something and it's just like, chillax. So I'm not even gonna shine any light on her right now. I don't wanna talk about her. But I, even Erica Badu got upset by what Blueface did. And what he was essentially saying was that he doesn't want to be with the baby mother and all of that. Some Sometimes he's even questioning if he is the father of the child. I couldn't quite hear the lyrics specifically about what he's saying, but he's saying he's not the proud, he's not the Oscar proud, so we're not going to be the proud family or whatever the case may be. Like, your lyrics aren't, aren't the best, blue face. So you doing this right now is like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what, what is it or that, that you're doing? Now, I don't mean to go in on blue face like that, but I just feel like, come on, bro, like, respect her. She's your child's mother. Like, when y'all was running up and down, like, you know what? I can't even say anything because he's never respected Krishan. And Krishan is just accepting what he, she's just accepting everything that blue face throws her way. So I can't even say anything about that. But I just wish Krishan would increase her standards and blue face would act right towards her. But anyway, let's move on to Trey Sons. Trey Sons. When is Trey Sons name not in the media for doing some messed up stuff to a woman, whether it is assault or sexual assault or something bad to a woman? When is Trey Sons name not in the media for that? Okay, according to the shade room, Trey Sons is facing a $10 million lawsuit for exposing a woman's breast at a pool party. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It says, according to court documents obtained by Rolling Stone, hashtag Trey Sons is at the center of a $10 million lawsuit. This lawsuit accuses Trey Sons of sexual battery and assault after allegedly grabbing and exposing the, vic the victim's breast while at a pool party. The lawsuit, the lawsuit, which was filed in federal court on Thursday, also named Trey's production company Atlantic Records and his manager Kevin Lies as defendants, claiming they were negligent in their supervision of their client and were responsible in some manner for his actions. In a statement to TMZ, Trey's lawyers, Michael Friedman says, this is yet another example of decade old allegations being repurposed into a federal case to take advantage of California's constitutionally questionable new look back window. We look forward to vindicate and Trey on the merits in court. So for me personally, I feel like Trey is always in the media for something. I haven't seen any other celebrity in the media as much as Trey Sons for the same exact thing. From the moment Kiki Palmer said something all those years ago, it's been woman after woman after woman after woman after woman coming up saying Trey Son sexually assaulted them in some way shape or form so do I feel like there is something to it absolutely I just feel like he hasn't had his day in court yet where he's been convicted of some shit yet but I feel like if he keeps it up he will and there was actually a video of him actually pulling out the lady's nipple and doing all of that so it's like you can't say you didn't do it you did it now, as for these women, I want to say, like, you have to be very careful. Doesn't matter, even if somebody's a celebrity, you can't just go all willy nilly, willy nilly, willy nilly, and expect that, you know, celebrities are going to be celebrities because they have all this money and they have all this fame and they feel like money and fame can buy them whatever they want. So you have to also enforce your boundaries as a woman being around a celebrity and not just think naive. 
Now his lawyer said that they're gonna fight it and hopefully Trey Songz will be vindicated, but I don't know. I just feel like if he's wrong, he's wrong. If this wasn't a situation where he was wrong, then oh well. Now let's move on to Miss Tasha K. I I know Tasha K is having a ball tonight. According to the, to the Neighborhood Talk, Cardi B ordered to pause efforts to collect three million owed from Tasha K after she filed for bankruptcy. They said, neighbors, it's no secret that Tasha K owes Cardi B $3 million, but it looks like Cardi will have to wait to get the coins from Tasha after she filed the bankruptcy back in May. According to Radar Online, a Georgia judge put the pause on Cardi B trying to seize Tasha's assets. The judge said the Chapter 11 case puts all of Tasha's pending legal matters on hold until the bankruptcy is resolved. Earlier this year, the board yellow rapper was awarded 1 million in general damages and 250k for medical expenses and a grand total of 1.2 million in addition she was awarded 1.5 in punitive damages and another 1.3 for attorney attorney fees Cardi sued Tasha for spreading misinformation about her so this long ass case that's been going on for a while we're up to the point now where tasha k filed for bankruptcy and i think it's the best thing that tasha k has ever done because cardi was coming for that money cardi was garnishing youtube checks and i feel like i felt like at the end of the day like if you're garnishing her checks then how is she going to how is she going to survive how is she going to survive at least make it out so you garnish a portion of the check or you take out a portion of her money but not all of it because if you take out all of her money, how is she going to pay her bills? So at the end of the day, congrats to Tasha K. I'm in support of Tasha K filing this bankruptcy. Hopefully the bankruptcy um, suit is in favor of Tasha K and she's able to let the courts know that she doesn't have the money to pay off the debt and they're able to resolve it in a way that Tasha K is able to not only pay off her debts but also sustain a lifestyle. So shout out to Tasha K. I know Tasha K is happy. B. Now, Glorilla, Miss Glorilla was hacked or was she? Now, a comment from Glorilla's account, it says, it was a retweet from Nicki Minaj saying, looking for the Uchi daddies. Glorilla says, Nicki loves me and I love her too. She does talk way too much though. Now, Car um, I said Cardi, you know. Um, Glorilla says, my Twitter is hacked. And then af right after that, all right, after she got her Twitter back, she said, them bitches can't keep a real bitch hacked for too long. I'm back bitches, go stream Lick or Something. Now she has a new song called Lick or Something as well. That song, it's all right. It's not um, the same as Tomorrow, but it's all right. It's something that you can, you know have fun within the club and whatnot but for me i feel like this is not looking too good for glorilla especially to the barbs because at the end of the day some people feel like she wasn't even hacked one but two for me i feel like if you were hacked and you know what the hacker the hackers say i would have been like oh my bad nikki that wasn't me or i would have been like um guys that wasn't me i'm sorry to whoever whoever i may have offended i'm sorry for offending you or whatever i didn't you know it wasn't me or whatever i would have put a personal apology out there for what was said but i feel like because glorilla doesn't have a care for nikki minaj if she was indeed hacked she doesn't care to respond and clear that up and I feel like that just looks bad for your career. Even though you could pick a side, still, like, cause I'm still a whole heart Barb. Like I'm Barb Nikki all the way down, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna talk about Cardi B. If Cardi B is wrong, she's wrong. If she's right, she's right. So I feel like you could pick a side, but you can still be cordial and still be respectful of all people that is around you. So I feel like she should have said something like, oh, hey, Nikki, I was hacked. This is really me. I don't like the things that they said about you. And I just wanted to clarify that and clear up that those weren't my words. You know, I feel like that would have been a dope thing for her to do. But again, she's going to do what she wants to do. She kind of brush over it, you know, to each his own. She got to promote her song, Lick or Something. I don't think it's really going to do much for the song because, um, the song just isn't tomorrow you know what i mean and 
I'm sorry to say the both Nicki I'm um, I said Nicki sorry both Cardi B and Glorilla has set a standard high for themselves with tomorrow too and it's like if y'all not bringing something good then the fans aren't gonna be too in tune with it so you know that's what I had to say about that now let's listen to what Kiki Palmer has to say about how she met her boo Darius Jackson we met very casually at a party, which is so okay. rare. We met at Diddy's. Uh, Diddy was doing an insecure after party with Issa Rae. Okay. And I had just done the show, and his brother worked on the show. Mm. And so, you know, I was just like, you know, I see his brother around a lot. Uh -huh. You know, and I'm like, who the hell with you? <laughs> I, I see you at the bodies, but you ain't never brought him with you. <laughs> and, um, and he was like, oh, that's my little brother, you know? And I was like, oh, little brother. <laughs> You know, my girl, my best friend, uh -huh. she was like, you should just say something to him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, she's like, hey, that's that's what I'm that's uh, I'm like, you, should, you should ask him if he wants a drink. <laughs> you should ask him if he wants a drink. And I'm like, bro, you think I got to like, yes. <laughs> So that's what Kiki Palmer had to say. She said, look, I met my man at an insecure party that Diddy threw for um, Issa Rae. And I feel like they seem to be inseparable ever since then. I feel like um, Kiki Palmer has been doing her thing. Congrats to her on her new baby, on her family, on her new boo. Um, shout out to her. I feel like those men, are the best the ones who are cute but don't know who they're that don't know that they're cute because then the pretty privilege they don't that don't really work with them they they don't really know that they're pretty so they just you know they they work they work hard when people know that they're pretty they be like all right nah they be re more relaxed but when people feel like you know i'm out here i'm out here i feel like they work hard in relationships and in real life so shout out to kiki palmer um i'm just happy like i wouldn't expect kiki palmer to be somebody who walks up on other people and introduce herself i expect kiki palmer to be like in my mind i thought kiki palmer would be like somebody who would relax and let the other person come to her but i guess when you're in the industry and you see what you want and you have so much confidence in yourself you go right after it right so anyway, last but not least, we're gonna be talking about Cardi B and what she had to say, we're back on the music again, what she had to say to people about Put It On The Floor 2 again. Thank you guys so much. Please um, check out Put It On The Floor Remix. Buy it, stream it, stick it up your pussy. And if you don't like the put um put on the four remix, download the regular. I don't give a fuck, bitch. <laughs> and thank you so much for the support. It's definitely it has it has given me a boost. And um I will be dropping more. And I'm sorry guys for not dropping music for a very long fucking time. But like <clears throat> soon. Soon. <laughs> thank you. So Cardi B says that music is coming soon and that's what I took away from that clip. So look, expect new music from Cardi B. Cardi B, I just wish that you keep the same energy from tomorrow to Wish Wish, Bodak Yellow, wherever that Cardi B is at that has hits living in her. I want that Cardi B to come forward and make this new songs, make these new songs and come out with hits. Like even though I'm a big barb, I do listen to Cardi B. So it's like, come on, come with hits girl. Like do good and let us see the new music. Let us see you, let us see what you've been up to. Let us see what you've been working on. We wanna see it. But anyway, that's it for 
today we have spoken about the controversies that's been circulating social media we have discussed music we've discussed it all now i want to hear what your thoughts and comments were are about the controversies going on about the music so share them down below what was your favorite part of the show now this is gonna be a show that i do every now and then i'm hoping i can do it once a week where i come to you guys and i bring you guys all these different topics and we can just chillax and vibe you know vibe out and talk about the topics and you know just mac right so i'm hoping i can be consistent with it but anyway share your thoughts and comments down below do you rather a shorter form of show or do you rather the long shows i rather i want to hear your thoughts and comments about it down below and don't forget to share the video like the video and subscribe to the channel and you and i will chat next time bye